Welcome to the Project Finance Modeling Course. Today, we'll be talking about taxes. Taxes are a complicated issue in the world of project and corporate finance. Income tax expense that is recognized on the income statement typically differ from the cash taxes paid. And this is because companies can defer paying the taxes for various reasons. The tax expense on the income statement will include the current income tax expense plus deferred income tax expense or benefit. There are several items you need to note. Current income tax expense is income tax expense payable in accordance with the tax code. These are the cash taxes payable using the relevant country's tax law based on the tax rules. These tax rules are different from accounting rules used for financial reporting purposes. Deferred income tax expense is any other income taxes recognized because of temporary differences between the amounts reported for tax purposes and those reported for financial reporting purposes. These temporary differences arise because of the depreciation calculation methods, revenue recognition methods, and treatment of losses. Why do these differences arise? Well, tax expenses may exceed the cash taxes paid due to the different depreciation methods under accounting and tax rules. For example, for financial reporting, companies usually select a straight-line depreciation method. However, for the purpose of paying taxes and under the tax laws, a company may select the accelerated depreciation method. The accelerated depreciation method results in depreciation expense being greater than the depreciation expense under the straight-line depreciation method in the early life of the asset. Therefore, the company pays less tax in the earlier period of the project. However, later on, the depreciation expense for the tax purpose decreases and becomes smaller than the depreciation expense under the straight-line method. Hence, the tax expenses become smaller than the cash taxes paid. Thus, the accelerated depreciation causes deferred tax expense, which is recorded as deferred tax liability on the balance sheet, to recognize the fact that more taxes will be paid in the future. Let's now review an example of an accelerated depreciation method. The accelerated depreciation method is country-specific. The tax code in the country where the project is being built will dictate whether the accelerated depreciation is allowed and how it should be calculated. In some countries, you can fully depreciate the assets for tax purposes in two years. In other countries, the accelerated depreciation is not allowed. One example of the accelerated depreciation method is MAKERS in the United States. MAKERS stands for Modified Accelerated Cost Recovery System. There are MAKERS schedules for asset classes with 3, 5, 7, 10, 15, and 20 years. The asset class, a specific asset, which is categorized as having a certain depreciable life, such as three years or five years. Let's take a look at the five-year makers schedule. So, you can see that the makers starts at 20% in year one, 32% in year two, and the sum of the percentages equal to 100%. Note that the schedule actually lasts for six years. Although it is called a five-year makers, this is because it starts in June in the first year, so it starts in the mid-year and ends in the mid-year. Let's review an example of the maker's application. Suppose that the asset's opening balance is 100. According to makers, we are allowed to depreciate 20% of the asset in the first year. So this will give us the depreciation expense for the tax purpose of 20. In the second year, we are allowed to depreciate 32% of the asset's initial value of 100. So this will give us 32. And so we continue our calculations. You can see that at the end of year 6, the balance goes to zero. Compare this to the straight-line depreciation method. Our straight-line depreciation expense is simply the value of the asset, which is 100, divided by its useful life of 6. So, you can see that in the first three years, our depreciation expense is higher for makers, which will result in lower tax payables compared to tax expense under the straight-line depreciation method. Let's calculate the tax expense and tax paid using the accelerated depreciation and straight-line depreciation methods. Assume that our EBITDA is 100 per year. Then, we've got the straight-line depreciation expense that we calculated in the previous slide. EBITDA, less depreciation expense, will give us earnings before tax. And, our tax expense is earnings before tax times the tax rate, which is 25% in this example. Now, we will calculate the cash taxes paid using maker's schedule. Our EBITDA is again 100 per year. Then, we've got our maker's depreciation expense. EBITDA, less depreciation expense, 
will give us earnings before tax. And our tax paid is earnings before tax times the tax rate, which is the same 25% we used to calculate tax expense. You can see how tax expense and tax paid are different. Note that the total tax expense and tax paid are equal. The difference is really temporary. Based on the tax expense and tax paid, we can now calculate the deferred tax liability balance. So, in year one, our DTL's opening balance is zero, the tax expense is 21, and the tax paid is 20. The difference between the tax expense and tax paid, which is one, will be the closing balance of the DTL in year one. In year two, our DTL opening balance is one, since DTL's opening balance is equal to the closing balance in the previous year. Tax expense is 21, and the tax paid is 17. So the difference between the tax expense and tax paid is four, plus the opening balance of one, will give us the closing balance of five in year two. We repeat these calculations until year six, when the DTL balance goes to zero. Deferred tax liability is the amount of income taxes, which are payable in future periods as a result of temporary differences in tax expense and tax paid. Hopefully you have now a better understanding of why temporary differences cause deferred tax liability.